my channel, Cool Art Stuff for Kids, or Adults or Teachers. You're probably all wondering, why does that old man have a box on his head? It's actually a rectangle, and I really have it on my head for a couple of reasons. One, because I can. I'm a grandfather, I can be silly, and I can really embarrass my grandchildren whenever I want to. So I'm wearing a box on my head. But the real reason is, the real reason is, we're gonna be drawing a box in perspective today. So um, a box sort of like this might be better because the proportions are a little closer to square. It might be easier for you to do it. This project is probably geared for, I wanna say third grade and above maybe, maybe even higher than that, but third graders may wanna try it. Um, you know that, that old thing when you were in school and you would draw, let me see if I can do it right here, yeah. You would draw, ba-boom, you would draw a square. Can you see that pretty well? I'm hoping so, hoping that's dark enough. Oh yeah, you can see that, right? All right, then you draw the second square a little bit up and off to the side. And this is a trick the kids have been using to draw a cube, like an ice cube or a rectangle, all for a really, really long time. There it is. Now, I guess you can see that, right? And then you connect the bottom two corners, the bottom top two corners, and the back corner and the back corner over here. And boom, there you have it. I've made a transparent ice cube, right? A box. And then you would go in and, and erase the interior parts and this little line here. But um, in reality, if we're gonna use one point perspective, um, and what is one point perspective, by the way? You're riding in your dad's car, you're riding in your car, uh, and you're looking down a long highway that goes straight off into the distance. This side of the road and this side of the road go for a long ways, and then they connect in a point way down there somewhere, right, miles away, and it looks like they connect, and that's called the vanishing point. That's where the sides of the road meet and, and create this illusion that the two parallel, parallel lines, edges of the road, are not really parallel. They converge at some point, which they don't. But anyway, so um, if I'm doing this, maybe I'm right about my perspective. Maybe this goes bing, bang, bong, bang, way back here. This goes at an angle. Now, can you see, I'm going to connect it here. Can you see how this is getting smaller and smaller as it goes back? And then the same way back here, but you can't see it because... That would be the interior of the box, and this goes back this way. So I've kind of done it right in my uh, box shape here. But we're gonna work bigger. We're gonna work bigger than that. And I'm guessing right now that I probably should do this in marker because I'm not quite sure if you saw that or not. And of course, I don't have a marker. Yes, I do have a marker. Okay, here we go. I just realized I have my octopus tank top on. I should have saved that for a marine life project. But here we go. So. Um, I'm gonna do the square that looks like this. And notice that I'm holding my pencil or my pen kind of like this as I work, and I'm not like doing this, because when, when you hold it, like when you're printing, you're being very exact, but your drawings become very tight. So you can do it holding a pencil or pen like this if you'd like, and I'm gonna make it about that wide. That I know you can see, right? Ba-boom, ba-boom, and across this way, and that's a pretty good square, isn't it? I quite proud of that square myself. So, um, if I had an imaginary line back here that represented, I'm gonna just do this. That's my horizon line. Boom, boom, across, just boom, boom. Right, and the horizon is where the sky meets the ground, or the sky meets the ocean, or the sky meets the mountains, and you can't see the horizon line, but it's there somewhere, off in the distance, correct? Okay. So way out here, I've got a point, a vanishing point, on this horizon line that continues out over here. So I'm going to make this part of my cube go back like that, and this part go back like that, and then I connect these, and then all of a sudden, the height here is taller than the height there, giving that illusion that it's, it's going back in space, correct? If this were a solid square, that's all I would draw. But I'm going to do one that... I don't know if you can see this up here, that you can kind of look down on or even inside of, right? Let me get something closer to the screen. See how you can see down inside there where the two cans are? Or you can have it to totally enclosed like that where the tentacles of the octopus are coming out of the box. So let us 
redo this or rethink this. See if I can get this off without totally destroying everything. Hey, that works pretty well. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my pencil and I'm gonna sketch out my box again. So a parallel line to the parallel edge of the paper, a parallel line to this side of the paper. So the distance from this point to that point is pretty constant, right? And then I'm gonna do a bottom, which is running parallel with the bottom of my paper here. And then I'm gonna do a top, which is parallel with everything else. And notice, I'm not using a ruler. If you use a ruler for these kinds of drawings, they look very tight and rigid, and it's like an architect did it or something, which is great for architects or draftsmen. But for artists, we wanna keep it kinda loose so that our drawings look natural. At least that's how I feel about it. So we've got bing, bong, bang, and bip, right? And from the corner of where bing and bip meet, I'm gonna go back, but I'm gonna go back up into the sky a little bit like this. Then I can go down here and do the same thing. But this distance from here to here is just a little bit longer than my pencil. Can you see that? And if I bring it over here, ooh, it's as long as my pencil. So it is getting shorter back here. So I'm gonna keep that and connect these two. So that's the side of my crate. And then I'm gonna go this way, back in space. And then I can connect these across here. Now, in this particular project, I want to challenge you to be creative and pretend that someone is shipping you a crate to your house and you're getting it and you don't know what's in the crate yet, but you're going to open it and take the lid off or whatever is inside is going to pop out like a jack in the box or it's going to punch through the sides of that wooden crate. It's going to be a surprise to you. So you have to use your imagination um, as I did in these examples. Someone's sending me a crate from Brazil and it has a couple of toucans in it. That would be a surprise. Yes, it would. Or from the ocean somewhere on a port, they found a crate and sent it to me. It's got an octopus inside. Okay, so use your imagination. For gosh sakes, you got one, right? All right, here we go. So there's my box. Hoping you can see it. I hope the lines are dark enough. Um, I'm going to... Uh, Maybe make this darker so you can see a pair. Now we're getting there. So the crate has lines that show the thickness, like the way the crate was constructed. There's a frame around the outside, right? And then these corners go boom, bam, bip, and bobble, okay? And then these come across here, and hopefully you can see that pretty well. Ordinarily, I wouldn't draw this dark, but I want you to see the actual crate and the square size. Okay, then I'm gonna come across this way. You know what, I'm gonna make my box, my crate a little bit slimmer, there we go. I'm gonna cut that off and bring this back here. There we go. And depending on what we've got in this box, we may not see these two lines at all, right? Um, because kind of like, again, in my example of the two cans, ah, come here. Fly over here, for gosh sakes. Um, they take up part of that space. So you only see the back line right there and right there, right? Okay. All right, so we've got that. And then I'm going to quickly sketch these in, come across here, and it's starting to take shape. And you've got to make a decision on what's going to be inside this crate because we're almost to that point now, right? Now, there we go. And are the slats of the crate... Up and down, perpendicular, going at an angle, crisscrossing. Let's do a crisscross one because the example I'm going to show you in a minute that's finished has slats all going diagonally down the wooden crate. But in this one, I'm going to go from corner to corner like this. There's that one. There's that one. And then this one's coming across here like a big X, like a reinforced, two pieces of reinforced wood inside that framework that make that box strong. And then there's gonna be two on this side. Play around with this a little bit like that. And then coming down this way. Oh man, I'm getting excited to find out what is gonna go in my box, 
right? Because I haven't really decided yet, but pretty soon I've got to make a decision. So then also because of the angle that I'm looking at this box, I'm going to see this thickness of that wood and this thickness of that wood and this thickness of that wood. It's already, can you see it's already becoming a little more three-dimensional now? And in here I see the inside thickness of that. Where else would I see it? Oh, and then right there. Boom. Can you see that? Okay, and then we're going to go, ah, we're going to go here. And then we're going to go, how am I seeing? I'm seeing the tops of them. So we see the top of that one and the inside of that one. And that goes that way and this comes back down this way. And then we see that. And I think I've got, oh, I missed that one. There we go. Now it looks like planks of wood nailed onto the box. Yes, that's good. And then my top ridge, because the wood is three-dimensional and has some thickness we're going to do this but again in the back i'm not sure what's going to happen here so i may have something coming out of there like a, a jack-in-the-box or a spooky character or um an octopus or whatever right i think i'm going to go with um well you'll see uh i'm going to have some lumpy shapes here going up into the up way high like this and this is going back down in here. So now all this is going to become erased. I don't see that anymore. Are you following me there, guys? There. So it almost looks like a ghost kind of shape, but I'm feeling like an outer space, outer space mood, so I'm gonna put a, a cyclops eye right there, and then I'm gonna go like that. Actually, this I can do with a marker because it'll be easier for you to see. Here we go, we're gonna go boom, like that. Here comes that piece. Here comes this piece, these are like horns. And on the ends of the horns, this character has two more eyes because he's an alien and he's got an eyelid and then he's got really lumpy skin, okay? And then, let's see, mouth. He's a very happy alien. And then he's got this going on here. Maybe he has one solitary tooth here because he's friendly. He's not very spooky and scary at all. Then I've got his pupil. And then the rest I'll do with color. And then he's got sort of these warty things all over his body. Gives him a little personality, a little bit of this action. Okay, and I could go on forever adding details, but I'm not going to. So you can see the box right here, boom. Boom, here's our original box, our crate. Ah. Mm. And there it is, that's what we started with, right? And then all this interior wood stuff I've made, I'm gonna show you in my final example. Uh, where did I put my tape? Sorry to get in the way of the camera here. This is a very professional production. Can you tell by the way I'm doing it? Like I've got everything prepared ahead of time and I know exactly what I'm going to say. I don't say, mm, ah, uh, and hey, ooh, ah. I don't do that kind of stuff. I try not to, because it makes me sound like adult. And I am an adult. Adult is what I meant, not adult, adult. But I'm not, and I'm gonna do this. I'm not gonna be tempted now, because I mentioned it, to say, uh, what am I gonna do next? Uh, okay, here we go. I'm just gonna tape this guy up here, sorry. If I could afford an assistant who could do all this stuff, it'd be great, wouldn't it? Okay, here's the finished product. Can you see that? I get him up there. You can see him? Better yet, using my professional close-up camera, you can see him right there. There he is. That's what's coming out of my crate. And do you notice that he has the word Pluto? They sent him from Pluto. And you're saying, oh, they declared that is not a planet anymore. It's so sad. But where did this guy come from then? You tell me. It says Pluto right on the crate. Okay, I've had a lot of fun with this project. I hope that you go to uh, Teachers Pay Teachers, Teachers Pay Teachers dot com slash store slash Damon little hyphen Ryan Eagle. I know that's a lot, but if you stop your video, you can copy it down. Society6.com slash Damon's Art. So the teacher pay teacher one, you can get projects like this with the, all the 
things, explanations better than trying to keep up with me on a video. And uh, I have a lot of teacher kinds of projects that kids can order also and do at home. And then the society6.com slash Damon's Art, I'll get out of the way, is a place where you can uh, pick up my actual paintings. This is the Jaguar Lady, by the way. I don't know how well you can see that from the reflections. But the Jaguar Lady is one of my uh, melting, heart, uh, melting Heart series. And um, those, those, those are all on my website. You can order uh, a tote with that on it. You can order a coffee mug with that on it. You can order bedspread with that on it. Anything probably that you can think of, my art can be printed on it. So society6.com slash Damon's Art. Hey, I had a good time. I hope you did too. Um, just a little kind of shout out now and very sincerely. Um, usually people say, if you can think of a teacher that really impacted your life, you know, a shout out. Give them a shout out and thank them. But the opposite is true for, for teachers. And at least in my case, I want to thank all those students that I ever had over my entire teaching career, which is a pretty long one. Uh, so I've come in contact with a lot of kids and adults uh, through adult education classes that I feel like I hopefully have impacted in a positive way. But I'm thanking all of you because, as many teachers know, we get back so much more from our students. Um, we like to watch them work and pick up kinds of the positive attitudes that they have and uh, it's uh, I want to thank you all thank you very very much have a great day and I'm signing off